Calculating the right amount of wax for your container candle can be confusing, stressful, and just plain hard. There's a lot of uncertainty around the right way to figure it out, and I'm here to help bring clarity with an easy to understand step-by-step -step process to accurately calculate your wax with confidence. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools necessary to measure the right amount of wax for any container and an understanding of why this method is used across the entire candle industry. This video brought to you by Armitage Candle Company, a leading resource for candle making education on the internet. I'm Kevin, the lucky guy on the left, owner of Armitage Candle Company. We can't talk about candles without bringing up math. This is because candle making is really just one big science project. Think about it. Every part of the process relies on a few areas of science. Physics, material science, thermodynamics, and chemistry are all components in melting, mixing, pouring, curing, and burning any candle. And as much as it pains me to say it, math is the core of knowing how anything really works in this craft, and it starts with measuring out our wax. Starting all the way back to the very basics, remember that a candle is really just wax and fragrance, occasionally mixed with some color. Unless you live in the Bahamas, at room temperature, wax is a solid. While fragrance oil is a liquid at room temp. This semi-solid mixture usually fits inside some sort of fixture. For example, container candles permanently live inside a jar, whereas some candles are created in a mold. Ideally, we can figure out how much wax we need to accommodate one or more of these vessels so we aren't measuring too much or too little of wax. No matter what kind of container it is, there are two defining physical properties that can help us figure out how much wax we need to melt down for them. Those two properties are volume and weight. Volume is how much space fits inside the container. This property never changes unless the physical size of the object somehow changes. In imperial units, this can be measured in fluid ounces, which isn't to be mistaken for normal ounces, which is actually a measurement of weight. The metric system uses milliliters to measure the volume of an object. Weight is how heavy an object is. In this case, it's how heavy the contents of the candle container are. This value can change based on what's inside. For example, if a container had solid gold inside, it would obviously be heavier than if it was filled with water. The imperial system measures weight with ounces and the metric system uses grams. So why is this important? because volume and weight are the two main ways to figure out how much wax needs to be in a container. Let's start by looking at how we can figure out the wax based on container volume, since that seems to be obvious. Remember, our ultimate goal is to fill the volume of a container with wax, so is there any math to figure out at all? Well, no, not really. It is a true statement to say that an eight fluid ounce container needs eight fluid ounces of wax. Volume never changes and there isn't anything mysterious about how wax works. So we can go ahead and start measuring out volumes if we want to and just kind of be done with this entire video. But you'll find it's actually not as easy as it sounds. Volume is a tricky thing to figure out without complicated tools. On one hand, it's not super easy to figure out exactly how much a given container really holds, and it's also confusing to try and measure out a specific volume of wax since it's often shipped in unique shapes, like flakes or beads, that aren't compacted enough to measure the true space it takes up when it's finally melted down. The closest thing is probably paraffin, which is often shipped in a block, but making precise measurements is actually really tricky to do, especially if you diverge from using exact cubes to make accurate measurements. So back to the drawing board we go, and I'll talk about how we can use weight to measure wax with confidence and precision, even though weight seems hard to put a strong target on. Weight actually makes a lot more sense to use for sizing candles once you dig into it a bit. Think about it. Wax is shipped and sold by weight. The specifications for how much fragrance oil can hold are all based on weight, and it's just plain easy to measure the weight of an object compared to the volume. All you need is a scale. Like I said earlier, weight changes depending on what's inside, but the volume remains the same. Remember how an 8 fluid ounce container needs 8 fluid ounces of wax? 
That means that if we know how much 8 fluid ounces of wax weighs, we can fill the entire volume of the container by weighing out that exact amount. And it doesn't really matter what the volume is, as long as we know what volume we're trying to fill. I only use 8 fluid ounces as an example, but the point is that if we know the particular volume we're trying to fill, we only have to weigh the corresponding amount of wax for it. So the question now becomes, how do we figure out the weight of wax that corresponds to a specific volume? More specifically, how do we know what volume of a container we're trying to fill? Going back to candle making as a giant science experiment, we'll use the concept of density to accurately figure out the volume of a container and how much wax we need to fill it with. Density describes how heavy an object is for every bit of space it takes up. If we know how much space the wax needs to fill, we only need to multiply it by the density to convert that to a corresponding weight. Let me say it again. If we know the volume of a container, the corresponding weight is the volume times the density. So what if we can use something else that we know a lot about to figure out the volume for us and then convert that to wax? Well, there is something. Fortunately, water is something we can use to figure out the volume of a container and then convert that directly to the required wax weight to fill that same space. Here's what we know. If you filled two large containers, one with water and one with wax, the water-filled container would be approximately 100 pounds and the wax would only weigh 86 pounds even though they're filling the exact same volume. This is because wax is lighter than water and we can use this to our advantage. In fact, wax is approximately 86% as heavy as water. This is merely an average, but it's relatively accurate for a wide range of waxes and wax types. But the ultimate question remains, how can we use that to figure out how much wax we actually need? Well, it turns out if we know how heavy a container filled with water is, we can easily convert that into a wax weight for the same volume. This idea allows us to measure wax by weight roughly two different ways. So finally, after all this theory, we arrive at the first method, which is to convert water weight directly into wax weight. Using density, or rather specific gravity if you're a science geek, we can easily convert water to wax. This is a three-step process, possibly even two if you only have one container, to find the exact amount of wax you need for the batch. First, we'll weigh the water, then we'll multiply it by the relative density to find the wax weight for a single container, and then we'll multiply that by the total amount of similar containers for the batch. In this example, we'll use that same 8 fluid ounce container from earlier as our vessel. If we fill it with water and weigh it, it comes out to 8.35 ounces or 237 grams. This is the weight of water in one container, which we'll convert from in the next step. Now that we have the water weight, we only have to multiply it by the relative density of wax, which is 0.86. This gives us a wax weight of 7.18 ounces or 204 grams, which is how much wax we need for a single container. Since only having one container is boring, let's keep going to show what we would need for multiple vessels. So let's pretend that we want to melt down wax to fill four of these beautiful eight fluid ounce containers. It's as easy as multiplying the previous result by four, which gives us 28.72 ounces or 816 grams. It might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how often this step is calculated incorrectly. Our final numbers are 28.72 ounces or 816 grams, which is how much wax we want to weigh and then melt down to fill four of those containers. The first method is based on knowing a container type and going from there. The second method is the old rule of thumb used to figure out how much volume a certain weight of wax yields. So instead of going from volume to weight, this is going from weight to volume. The true number can vary, but if we use an average of 86% relative density, we can back calculate the amount of wax a certain weight will yield. Starting out, at least when I started out, the common rule of thumb stated that one pound of wax creates approximately 20 fluid ounces of volume. 
And as close as that is, using 86% as our estimate, one pound of wax will fill about 17.8 fluid ounces of volume, which happens to be roughly 526 milliliters. Like I said before, 86% is merely an average that represents a wide variety of waxes and wax types. You can conduct more advanced scientific tests to lock down the exact density of your wax and then tune these formulas even more, but 86% will put you in the competitive ballpark so your estimates aren't crazy and wild. And that's it. The step-by-step -step process for locking down the amount of wax you need is really simple and only requires water and a scale. We published an ebook to describe these steps as a handy reference guide with no fluff. Candle Math for Newbies not only covers wax, but also fragrance oil calculations, including how to calculate fragrance oil blends. Because if you've stuck around through this, you can use this coupon code to drop most of the cost. The book's already dirt cheap, so we're pretty much talking about pennies to put this in your candle making arsenal. Thanks for watching. We have math and so much more on our website, and we're working our hardest to create the absolute best content for candle makers to consume on the internet. Like and subscribe if you want to.